If you can't tell from my background, fall is here. All of the leaves are down, the trees are changing, and the temperatures are surely starting to drop, which means that there's a lot of things that still need to get done at our homestead before freezing temperatures and winter really start to roll in. And although the bulk of the growing season is done, Whew, there's a lot of work still going on. And today I'm gonna to cover eight things that you should be doing this fall on your homestead. So let's get to it because honestly, time's a ticking and we need to get these done. The first item on the list is getting in your fruit trees. We're trying to grow a nice fruit orchard in our homestead. So by planting during the fall, there's actually a lot of great benefits, especially if you have a really short spring season, the fall can be another great time to plant these trees. And what's really great about it is if you do get your trees in, early in the fall, then it's gonna give them enough time to start to create some deep roots into the ground and start to establish themselves before winter comes and the trees do start to go dormant. So we do have a few trees that we were able to get into the ground. We did put some fencing up around them because we have quite a bit of deer around here. So just to protect these guys as they do start to grow. And another positive of growing in the fall is it's actually usually a lot wetter of a season for us here. And that means that there's a lot less watering that we have to do. These trees are a bit away from our house and from any of the watering sources that we have. So it's nice because mother nature will water them for us and it's a lot less work on us here at the homestead. I'm Danielle of the Split Arrow Homestead and welcome to our channel where we bring you new content every week about homesteading and living a more self-sustainable lifestyle. If you like this type of content, then definitely make sure to subscribe and like this video as it really helps support our channel. And without further ado, let's continue on. Number two is gonna be to organize. Organize your barn, shed, garage, wherever you're keeping all of your tools. Honestly, if you're like us during the summer, it's easy to just throw things into a pile and think I'll organize that later. But then when you come in next spring or summer and you're kind of rushing to get things done in time for growing season, then it's really important that everything has its place and is organized and you know where it is. So I definitely suggest taking the downtime now to go in, organize, kind of decide what you need for the rest of the winter, what you'll need in the spring. So check on what type of bulbs you need, what type of seeds you need. If you need hay, feed, any other things that you might want to upgrade during this time because you definitely have a lot more time on your hands and why not utilize it now? While you're here, the next item is going to be to start to maintain any of your tools. Now, during the year, you might have banged up your chainsaw, loosened up your lawnmower or tractor, and you didn't really have the time to full on fix it, I definitely suggest going to all of your tools now, running any tune-ups that you need on them, fixing any of the items there, and really kind of understanding if there's anything that you need to purchase. Black Friday, Cyber Monday are right around the corner and there's gonna be amazing deals on all of those summer products, especially with the end of season deals. So right now is a really opportune time to buy those things. All of the big box stores really wanna get them out in order to put in a lot of Christmas and holiday items. So we love to go shopping during this time and actually start saving on money. And the next one, you're seeing a lot of our chickies kind of fly around and that is to start to winterize. Now it's pretty cool at night. It's starting to drop down to the 30s and 40s here. So it is getting quite cold, which means that we do need to change up a few things in our barn for all of our animals. And the first thing is making sure that they have a warm place at night when it does have dropping temperatures. There's gonna be a lot more predators at this time. So really being keen on everything that's around and keeping all of your animals nice and safe. We keep all of our animals inside of this barn. We do have a little run over here. You can't really see it because of the sun, but we will close that up 
at dusk usually lock everyone in so they have a safe place if we don't do this we found that we'll have some missing birdies from the foxes and animals out and about so i definitely suggest making sure that you have a safe place for all your animals and you start to think about what's going to happen in the harsher harsher temperatures of the winter what are you going to do with their food what are you going to do with their water and how will you keep it warm where they live water is definitely the number one priority and making sure that the water is not freezing and you're able to provide them room temperature or at least not frozen water is key and you want to start thinking about how you're going to get that done now before winter happens um, there's a lot of different kind of warming things that you can add to their water there's special chicken waters for our rabbits we do just manually kind of bring them in but something to think about now and kind of come up with a solution and get everything cleaned and ready so that when the first night of frost comes you have everything that you need and you're ready for it the next items to think about is actually winterizing your garden. Making sure that if you do have any older crops, any spent crops, that you are cutting them back. We'll usually cut them right before the roots. So we'll let the roots stay in and then we'll lay off all the dead crops on top, any of those spent crops. If there's anything that did have a disease over the year, definitely throw that away. Don't even put it into your compost. You really don't want it to infect any of the soil or plants that are gonna come for next year. Harvest any of your tubulars or any of your colder veggies that are starting to still blossom and bloom like your tomatoes, any type of leafy greens, and really start to close up your garden. Right when the winter starts, we will kind of cut back our plants, harvest everything, and then we'll cover all of our garden beds with a layer of mulch or leaves. And this way it will really lock in all of the nutrients for the winter and it will start to create an additional layer that we can work with next year. Something else that we do is we actually start to let our chickens into the garden at this time. They definitely love going in there. It's a nice little tasty treat for them every day. They'll go in, scratch the garden beds, eat any of the little buggies in there. So they get to really enjoy themselves and it does help with scratching around any of that soil, which we really love. And I did do uh, another segment about this and how we winterized our garden. So I'll link that down below, but we did a lot of things there to prepare our garden and you should be doing too. Which you can also start to think about maybe what type of seeds you wanna be growing next year and start to plan at this time for spring. Spring is gonna come here before you know it. And with some of the seed shortages that have been going around, I definitely suggest purchasing things ahead of time before it's more of a last minute thing and you're kind of just getting any leftovers of what's left. Another thing to think about during this time is not only about your garden and your animals, but also about your property in total. Now, we've been mowing the lawn and making sure to keep our property nice all year, but I love the colder seasons because it really does help dry up a lot of the trees, a lot of the ivies, poison ivy especially here, and it makes it a lot easier to clear out segments of land, to upkeep any of your paths or trails, and to really focus on an area that maybe hasn't gotten so much love. So I definitely suggest taking this time when you aren't in the garden and worrying about doing different things to build up your land. Maybe there's some things that you do need to build in your garden or have ready for the spring. And this is the time to do it because you have more of the time on your hands and why not have everything ready for you instead of last minute hustling and bustling to get them all ready. This next item isn't so much about the garden and the homestead as much as it is about preparing yourself. Now, I love the saying spring cleaning for cleaning out your closets, but I think fall cleaning really has a deep place in my heart because I will kind of do an inventory of everything that I really used up this summer, things that I really probably should get a new item of and clean out the closets. I definitely suggest going into your closet, kind of understanding what you really use, what you don't use, or what needs to be thrown out because there are just too many holes and stains on, and donating any of those items that you are, have that are just gently used. There's definitely a lot of sites that you can use, and I'll link down to Thread Up below, which I really love 
just being able to kind of take a bag and donate everything to them it's really great and i have a discount you can use there but cleaning out the closet although it might not be a farm specific item is something that you should be doing and making sure that you have the correct clothes shoes and outside clothing that you need to efficiently work in your yard and with your animals because you wanna keep yourself safe. I know, like I said before, we have a lot of poison ivy around here, so making sure that we have the right apparel for our arms that are gonna cover everything so you get scratches and bruises, hanging out with the rabbits, cutting their nails, you can definitely get some bruises there, and making sure that you can really capitalize on all of the good retail sales that are happening is gonna help make things a lot more affordable for you as well as you pre-plan for any of your spring and summer clothes that you need that are already on sale from last year or from this past season. <laughs> Another important indoor task is prepping your kitchen. By now, a lot of your canning from the season is probably over, so I definitely suggest running an inventory of maybe items that you didn't get everything that you wanted, making sure that you mark that up for next year so you grow more, or opposite if you really had too much. You probably won't remember these things in the spring, so taking a note of it now is going to be really important. It's also a great time because you can go in and restock any of your goods. As the economy is super crazy right now and we don't know what's going to happen, I definitely suggest running that inventory and seeing what you might need for the colder temperatures as well as grabbing out all of your cold winter recipes. Get out the recipes for that chili, for those great delicious warm desserts, and for any of those nice stews or warm, warm, toasty, nice meals so you can start to prepare for them and really get you excited for the wintry months that are just ahead. The last item here is really to congratulate yourself because you had an amazing year this year. And the next thing that you need to think about is next year. So take this time when you're stuck indoors to start to plan for next year. What were your challenges that you had this year? What were your wins, your successes, and what do you want to work on more next year? Is there certain crops that you want to try, certain things that you really didn't like and you don't want to try next year? And what are some challenges that you had that maybe you could start to ideate some solutions so you don't run into this again next year? I know for us, one thing that we had this year was we did create a watering system in our garden and we used a hose every day to water our plants. Now, not that bad, but what we really want to think about is how can we automate things at our homestead? And the way we're going to be doing this is by adding a drip system to our garden. So right now we're already thinking of a lot of different solutions that we can do in our garden so we can kick off spring with this already set up, ready to go. And we don't have to worry if there's events in the summer or if we're really busy and we can't get outside to do the watering for that day, it will still get watered and all of our plants will still grow successfully. That's really it for the things that we're focusing on this fall. And you can too to make sure that you're up and ready for success in the spring. I hope this is helpful and I'll see you guys again next time.